Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Red. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are going to be talking about the things that scare us the most. Why is it that we only get to be scared in October? I don't know the way culture works, but apparently if you're in the business business of being scared, you gotta talk about it in October. Yeah, but man, you know, it's there's um there's a holiday at the end of the month and it's called Reformation Day. Reformation Day. I mean yep. Halloween. Yep. You know, yeah, it's it's that time of year people where people routine. People if, I understand. If if you're one of those people who is like a little strange and like has something deep inside of you that's like a like a seed of darkness that at any moment could explode into like some sort of tree. You think this is strange. This is all people, man. And then so some, some of us somebody, embrace it. Somebody who hasn't like, who's not too religious, who's like, oh, this is my favorite time of year. You know, this is for you, peeps. Love ya. Okay, first of all, let me just, I feel like there was some <laughs> exclusionary language there. Uh, so I want to backtrack over some of that stuff. The first thing being that I want to a, other you. A little bit weird. Uh, calling these people a little bit weird. Incidentally, I just recently saw in some People stats like that, were, that were presented at the YouTube Summit that- can't, We can't shut up about it. Uh, I think more than half of, it, it is. It, I think it might be like the most popular subgenre of, of uh, movies right now amongst the general public. Also, I think that everyone has a seed of darkness inside of them. Some people have just made friends with it. Hence Reformation Day. Uh, and then, what was the last thing you said that was exclusionary? Oh, not you said re- not, not religious. religious. <laughs> actually, I have always been a fan of horror movies, even, and I'm actually one of the things I'm gonna talk about, I think my religious past plays into the way that I think about it. And some of the people that I know who are still very, very religious consider themselves very, very big horror fans because I think it makes it that much more visceral and real. I'm just messing. You know, some of the nicest, sweetest people I know are horror fanatics. Because they they get it out. Just like some of the nicest, sweetest people I know are really hardcore heavy metal fans. Because when when you've got a form of entertainment that is a release. Like a if release. you're into screamo or you're into like hard death metal, you know, the traditional understanding of that culturally or is, like to be, is to be scared of these putting people. Putting a hole in your like body and then stretching it real far. Yeah, people who do that kind of stuff, in my experience, tend to be the sweetest, most well-adjusted people because they've, again, they've made friends with that side of themselves and under, I mean, it's like everybody's got it in it. He's the nicest person I know, he must have a Penile piercing. Yeah, the, those of us who have denied that that is a part of us, it's just sitting there and it has its way with us. We don't control it. You need <gasps> to make friends with it so you can control it. Well, it's in there, if you don't make friends with it, it controls you. It's like having a pet or having a like gremlin. a predator that lives with you. Yeah, it's like a mogwai or a gremlin. Yeah, which learn, I, learn to embrace Which it. I was too afraid to watch. Always. That's what, basically, ultimately, Link, what I'm getting at here, what I'm implying is that oh, you have yet to make, make friends with the dark seed inside of you, I think, and it makes you a little unpredictable and potentially a serial killer. I've made a list, that's the number one thing, you know, you've made your list, I've made my list yeah. of the things that scare us the most. I guess I should put the number one thing on my list is that my doom seed will germinate. Mm-hmm. Like, what's gonna happen? Yeah. You know? Because um, everybody's got one. Also, know I have this side of me that like th- that can be impulsive, and not, I, you know, I thought about putting that on the list. Am I afraid of myself? Everybody should be a little bit. Yeah, everybody has within them the potential to one day have a psychotic break and run down the street naked. Everyone has the potential for that. Right. If you have a psych, then you could have a psychotic break. And my belief is, if you are a heavy metal fan, you are the least likely to be the one running naked down the street. That's just my anecdotal theory. Channel it, release it. <laughs> what do you think about that, Jenna? <laughs> just, I, I know plenty of metal people, and I, I mean, some, I've seen them run down naked. Running naked down the street intentionally or as a result of a psychotic break? I'm just oh, saying okay. these are different yeah, things. Yeah, 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 probably yeah. it's intentionally. Yeah, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there There's nothing go. wrong with streaking. Yeah. In fact, I, I, I'm an advocate. <laughs> 
I yeah, I'm due for a good streak. Do you, do you know that I need to get struck? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name any names here, but somebody that I know, Bob, uh, who is currently in college, uh, I was recently talking to them. Uh, is not my son, just in case you're wondering. And there's a tradition. My daughter? It, no, there's. I'm not gonna let you narrow it down, but it's not either one of our kids. But there is a tradition at many schools of streaking. There's an area of a of a camp of a campus where there's a tradition of streaking, like you walk, you run from here to here. Yep. And I was on the phone talking to him and I and he was telling me about, well yeah, we. I was like, what'd you do to celebrate your birthday? He was like, well we went we went streaking. Ah, that's, and it, that's great. You know, and it's and again, it's just like that's something you do. And, and when it's intentional and it's not the result of a psychotic break, uh, that's a different, it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't, yeah, I was about to mention names, but I, I won't go in that direction. I was gonna make fun of a certain country music singer, but I like the person, I don't wanna make fun of them. Um, oh, I know you're talking about. So instead I'll say, yeah, actually, Lily in her freshman year, her, you know, very early on, she she reported that there was a there was a streaking uh, cavalcade. I think it's important. She didn't participate in uh, as a freshman, but hey, she's a sophomore now. You know. Well, incidentally, in the footage that you uncovered from our college days, that we show <laughs> some of that right, right. on uh, the Mythical Society. One Never of the videos seen is me and Greg streaking, not uh, in any like place on campus but in our apartment complex. From the apartment, I I said, if you guys will s strip down naked and let me film you streaking, then I will join you guys in shaving my head. And then um, I was shocked to watch the footage because we did not try to frame it in such a way as to not show any junk flailing. Yeah. Oh, and I, when I say we, I guess I mean me, because I was filming. And so I was like, oh my God, I can't, I can't give this to, employees to edit. Yeah, right. There's junk flailing. Yeah, it's pretty blurry. Yeah, I pride myself on having unblurry junk, but I was not streaking at the time. It was 19. I very crisp. It was 1996 junk. and you were using a handheld yeah. DV and it's like the footage is 20 years old. So uh, what do we want to do? Let's get let's get into, get into this. the fears. Cuz I I like it when we each have made our list and we can surprise each other. This is this is more your jam, so uh, you should go first. Um, I'm gonna start. What scares you more? I'm kind of starting <laughs> in in more expected territory with uh, demons, and uh, okay, again, right. I it, it is amazing how. First of all, they just keep putting out horror movies, and my experience with horror movies is I go to watch horror movies with now with Shepard because he's the one that will watch them with me. Jesse won't. We go to the theater quite a bit. And we'll watch a horror movie, most recently, Barbarian, which I wrecked because I loved it. And if you go see a horror movie, especially if you go to an AMC theater, what do they do before the horror movie? They show you 15 trailers, right? Of other horror so movies. So every horror movie that's coming out. And then my typical experience is, because I tend to then go to Rotten Tomatoes to see, is this worth my time? Is this yeah, worth yeah. me and my son's time? Is that, Eight times out of ten, which would also be four times out of five, they're so low ranked. Like these horror movies end up being in the teens sometime. And you're like, man, that, that it looked like it was gonna be so great. Hmm. But the trailers really get you in the mood to be scared, right? And oh. I find myself consistently frightened by the exorcism ones. And I'm not talking about the exorcist, I'm talking about all any, of them. So there's a movie. I don't know what the name of it is. It's probably out now by the time we're talking about this, but they've been rolling the trailers and it's about this uh, nun who is like studying, you basically get the whole movie in the trailer, but she's studying uh, exorcism amongst these males who it was a, it's a men only like priesthood, Catholic priesthood training and then it let her in to this class not because she's gonna be a priest, but because she's doing, re I don't know what the premise is, but she's uh, in this class. Oh yeah, glass ceiling. Cause yeah. I went, see, I went to the Jordan Peele uh, movie and I saw this trailer too. Yeah, and it's. She's the only one who can do it. And and then there's like this thing where her mother was a bit nuts and it turns out, well, her mother wasn't nuts, her mother was possessed. And this demon has been trying to get into her for all this time. And it's there. It's in this little girl that they've got in the bottom of this like church, and I, 
the scenes are just chilling to the bone. And I, first of all, they do the classic thing, which has always scared me, is anytime you pair anything like scary and supernatural with a little girl. <laughs> I thought that was gonna be a the separate thing on the list. Scared you, of little girls? You tell me little girls is not on your list? Little girls who are possessed by demons. So th that is, okay. inc it is inclusive well, that's, of, okay. and again, this is probably some uh, unresolved misogyny or whatever. You see this little girl and you're <laughs> like, oh, this is, she's not a threat. She she couldn't do anything to hurt, hurt, hurt anyone. And then, but when the devil gets inside of her and she puts on a little dress and her head starts spinning around, I, it just, it gets me and I am so frightened by it. So the, so you're really saying demon girls, uh, demon possessed girls. You're not just talking about demons. Uh, but I mean, it's scary when they go into dudes too, man. I, it's I'm just a, not as scary. Okay, okay, I get it. But let's go there. I want to come back to demons in general, but let's let's keep going down this path. So you're going to see that movie? Well, I'm going to look at the Rotten Tomatoes. And like see all, if it's any I remember back in the day. I you, bet you it sucks. You got me to see the Ring with you. There's a the there's a, good. there's a girl in that. Well, and Jesse and I had that co dream that I talked about on the podcast. I or talked about it on GMM. I mm -hmm. had to go back and listen to that to really get the details but then I have since not gone back and listened to it. But essentially, there was <laughs> okay. a little girl in a dream, in my dream, a nightmare, and I woke up, it was a little blonde girl, and then Jesse woke up from a nightmare, and she had been dreaming about a little blonde girl, and I swear that we had some little demon in our dreams, man. Now here's the thing, what do I actually believe about this? Let's let's go there because- Right, because that's the, the, I thought that's that when, the deeper you question. when you said demons, I was like, well, I th I was, presuming that what you were going with here was like, these scare me the most in movies, like possessions and stuff like that, because I kind I you know, I'm, it could be real. Like the, the spiritual realm, demons, possessions, this stuff could be real. That's what makes it real scary. Yeah, and that I think that's what really ingrained it in my mind as a kid was seeing the Exorcist trailer when I was, I remember the Exorcist, Exorcist trailer Exorcist. coming on while I was uh, watching television and I felt like I had to get out of the room. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh no, 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 no. It, it was overwhelming and because at that point. Hey, don't come through the TV, man. At that point, there was absolutely no question in my mind that this stuff is real, right? It, it was like, of course, demons are real. Now we were in you know, like a Baptist church at the time where it's like, nobody's getting possessed. I mean, maybe somebody's got like a demon of gluttony or something because they're going to the buffet too much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the way that, but it's not, How many times has he gone back to the <laughs> church potluck table? It's not a, there's not a, in the same way that there is in like a Pentecostal or a charismatic. Now, when I did go and work with Campus Crusade in New York City for the summer of 1998, we worked with exclusively charismatic churches. So these are mostly black churches uh, who are doing the inner city work up there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did witness uh, an exorcism. Oh, well, there was an exorcism in the next room. Uh, like a lot of like yelling and screaming and then like a girl went into a room, there was some yelling was and screaming. Was this during a service? Uh, yeah, yeah. So there was a, there was a, you said it was a girl? Yeah, she did, but it wasn't, she wasn't a little Or a girl. woman. I mean, she was a teen. There was, okay, it was a teen? Yeah, and not she quite was, as scary as She was in girl. the service, was she brought forward as this teen we got, needs to be exercised. We, we were working at the Put church. Put her on the Peloton. So we, it wasn't that simple. We arrived as it was in process and we heard stuff going on and then like she kind of walks out and she looks like she's been crying. Which again, oh, wow. my personal, at the time, here, let me just be honest with you. At the time, I thought, no, oh, that's bullshit. She was, that's not a demon. That's what I thought at the time because I, I was yeah, like, dude, I'm I've seen the demons in the movie, man. She's not spitting peas. There's her voice didn't change, and since then, spitting peas. Is you that know, what happened? Well, you, anything you eat, you got to spit. In the in, in the in the Exorcist, she spit. I, I mean, it's green. I don't know if it was peas. I can't really. Remember. <laughs> oh, you're talking about vomit. Yeah, but s clearly supernatural things happen. That's what makes it super scary. However, I have watched many exorcisms on YouTube because I'm kind of into it. And really? um, there's there's a guy in South America who is pretty famous for doing exorcisms. In uh, there's a there's a British YouTuber 
can't remember his name, who went down there to investigate. I told you about this. When do you, yeah, when you tell me stuff like this, I act like I'm listening, but I'm I'm going into, I'm going into flight mode. Okay, great. I'm, I'm in, or freeze well, mode. here's I'm, the thing. I'm not, I can't listen There's to this. There's nothing to be scared of. There's also that. Uh, Are you, can you describe what this, in, situation is when you're watching this, are you like in a doctor's office waiting room just watching exorcisms before you go back to get your mole checked? No, are just, you like turning all the lights off? Like, are in, in like your basement? I'm, well, to be clear, I don't watch exorcism content on the internet to be scared because it is definitively not scary. What's it like? It's fake. Oh, oh, okay. That, that's, that's the point I've been trying to get to this whole time. <laughs> is that. No, there's, but there's plenty of exorcisms that even if it's not real. There is no exorcism. Sincere, th right? There is no exorcism that has ever been recorded on video that I anyone is doing anything that a normal person couldn't do, just acting weird. And that's why there's no evidence that any of this stuff is real. As far as I've never seen any evidence that it's real. Yeah, but the girl who came out of the room, do you think she was an actor at that church you went to? No, she was being emotionally manipulated. That's horrible. Well, is it really? I mean, well, yeah. it, it, it is, it is she, hold on, hold on. What do you mean? It it's, is horrible, but I'm saying emotional manipulation happens in almost every group of people that you can possibly right. come up with. I'm doing it to you right now. It, it, it can be more intense, and I do think that there's spiritual abuse that happens in that. What I'm saying is that, it's a it's a it's a charade that everyone is in on and everyone believes. It's not dishonest. I think that that girl thought she was possessed. Oh, and okay. I think that these preachers who were doing it thought that she was possessed. It's not an act. Is, that's well, what you believe about an, speaking in tongues. Yes, okay, I, okay, I know yeah, people I, who are charismatic Christians I, who could speak in tongues, no longer believe in Christianity, and still can speak in tongues because right. It is an, the human body is amazing. The stuff that we can yeah. do, our mind is so flexible. We can convince ourselves. We can hold two disparate thoughts at the same time. I'm not surprised at all about any supernatural experiences that people claim to have had. And I'm still open to the fact that they might be real. And that's why it's still scary to me because I'm like, well, it might be real. And there's always gonna be a part of me that's like, it's like it might be real. I'm just saying that I've never seen anything that would suggest that there is stuff actually happening that can't just be explained by people's mind playing tricks on them. But I, hey, I'm still, I'm open to it. I'm still looking into it. And that's why I watch, I'm just fascinated with religious culture in general. That's why I watch a lot of preachers on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And these guys who are, who are <laughs> exercising people, they're the most entertaining of all. There's one guy, is his name Bob, Lo Bob something and he's got a cross and he puts it on your forehead and he's got a Bible and it's like, this dude is freaking intense. And again, everybody thinks that it's real. Bob probably knows that it's 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 at least somewhat deceptive, but mm -hmm. at this point he's in too deep. All right, um, I wanna give a shout out to Stevie's podcast. It's back for season three, Best Friends Back, all right, with her high school best friend, Nagin. They've reconnected, now they talk about all sorts of things and I'm very excited about the fact that yes. she's, Stevie is going in, well, for her birthday, she is gonna be opening a time capsule. I don't know when it's from. I'm guessing it's from like grade school. She made it in grade school. She's gonna open it and go through it on the podcast. Yes. Uh, so yeah, they've they've expanded. There they might be they bring a demon in, in there. Might be a demon in there. Cause she so, was a little girl when she made it. So yeah, I, I love that idea. Um, watch that episode or listen to, well listen to it, along with us wherever you listen to your podcast. Best friends back. All right. Yeah. Shout out to Nagin. Okay, what do you got? Maybe she's got a uh, time capsule too. For, well, don't look at my list. I can't read from here. I Cause need glasses. this, um, I, I was making notes um, like when I was in the car and I didn't have time to pull up a new note, so this is my note with my potential DJ names on it, and I don't want you to see them. Oh, wow. Because I, I have decided that I am revealing my DJ persona, mm -hmm. including my DJ name, at Mythicon. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, I'm, I'm making a list, and um, 
I you know, I I will say the first name on the list don't, is don't uh, don't don't. don't I'm not gonna use it. So it's I'm not gonna use uh, DJ Dope Nuts. I'm just not gonna do that. Sometimes you gotta just get through some names. Right. It's like it, you know, a list is kind of like not no 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 bad ideas until you've but read, read the, them back. That's the first one. That's actually the first one. DJ on my Dope Nuts. Dope Nuts. Yeah. N nuts with a Z. N nuts with two T's. No, but that two T's and a Z might do it. I don't want to do anything with an alternate spelling. That's one of the things that I've decided. So I'm gonna I'm doing a DJ set at Mythicon. If you if that's what's going to put you over the edge to buy a ticket to Mythicon, October, um, tw what is it, 29th? Tw 28th 30th? and 29th. 28th and 29th. Go to mythiconticketscom You can experience along with everything else the dance party that I will be DJing as my DJ persona. We're kind of bookending uh, Mythicon. James and the Shame is doing something on the first night and then mm -hmm. you're closing out the, the, the basically the dance party with- I what, do have what, dope nuts. Whatever the DJ, I, I, I'm excited. I'm I, don't wanna thinking, I don't wanna build it up too much. No, you should because that's how, that's how people get excited about things. Right, Mythicon tickets, if we're gonna, you know, we're, we're, we're reaching capacity. And you know what, if you can't make it, we're gonna live stream, we've told you this, we're gonna live stream our stage show. But we're not live streaming DJ Dope Nuts nope. or you, James in the It's shame. not gonna be Dope Nuts. Well, I'm Don't just, call I'm, me that. I, I'm using Don't it, call me that. I'm using That's it not me. as a placeholder That's name. That's not me. DJ TBD. It's better than, oh, DJ TBD. Call me that. DJ TBD. For now. T D DJ TBD. Hold on, I mean. Or just TBD DJ. Well, how does this relate to your fears? Um, well, the the first the first one that uh, it's just I made the list for the things I'm afraid of under my DJ oh, name list. Oh, 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 That's oh. what it has to do with it, homie. Okay. I thought, okay, homie. I thought you were afraid of dope nuts. No, um, dangling dope nuts. That that might be my first. Um, I don't know. DJs don't release like mixtapes. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. Who cares? You Who, make the rules, man. Who cares? Yeah, it's just pirate. You know, it's a lot of lot of licensing involved. Um, I mean, I got to go with the most obvious thing that I'm afraid of at first: blood. I mean, I'm mm. I, I'm simply afraid of blood, but it's not like yes, I'm a it's I'm afraid of the circulation of blood, the concept of blood circulating. Like I'm afraid of getting, like if if I if I try to take my own pulse, I just hate that. Hmm. I mean, and it's kind of ironic because it's kind of the sign of life. It's a really good sign that there's a liquid coursing through tubes in your body, but when I touch it and it like, it pulses and just, it's, it, it makes me queeze. I just get queezed. Now, once it, the blood starts coming out, you're also queasy, right? Because I think that's the most, yeah. that's the place where most people begin to say, okay, but a lit, if, if, if like if your finger was bleeding, I wouldn't faint. But if it was the result of a cut, if it was that, squirting blood, the circuit is the circulation is worse than the the bleeding. Uh, ju just the sight of blood, it needs to be paired with something like a visceral a, a injury. Good Chianti. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like um, an injury or circulation. Like it has to be paired with something. It's the one-two punch of this blood is associated with this thing, this movement through my innards. Like I don't like anything related to surgery, like cu cutting people open, exposing the insides, putting the insides on the outside. That's that's gross. I think that's why I don't like dog erections. Hmm. Now that I think about it, because it looks like the inside coming outside. Yes, I don't think many people like. I don't even think dogs like dog erections. Oh, they do. They I do. mean, do, then you, why do they lick it? Uh, I don't, they're ashamed. I, I didn't mean to go down this path. I'm sorry. Um, any in, of course, there's the there's the timeless story of me opening the Barbie doll at Christmas and cutting my finger, and then at my father-in-law's house, the in-laws' house, and then running to the kitchen sink, and then the next thing I know, I'm coming to in my father-in-law's arms. Because and my my finger hand. my finger was cut because and it's some, like having a like creating that like crevice that ditch that like oh how deep is that uh, like you mean cut if you see bone oh my gosh oh I can't stand it and like so yeah seeing gross like that in a movie is just 
it just seems I don't nasty. Like that. I don't like that stuff and, in the movie. And then I don't like you know don't like seeing it in uh, medical dramas either. Like I got a freaking turn. By the way, like for, I, I'm turn a huge around. horror fan, but I don't think I've ever watched like Final Destination, right? You okay, know, which is just people so, dying in a bunch of weird ways. Like. I, I kind of get it, and I would if you asked me to go, I will go to it, and I'm not going to get freaked out. You're I'm, more psychological, but yeah, I don't like go- gory. Is not I, like I wasn't a kid that saw those gore magazines. Like, mm-hmm. uh, what's the name? What's that one that was always in every stand in every gas station we went to? Jugs. Like, no, that was different. Um, anyway, I, I am not into that at all. I, I think most people would agree with you on this. There, because every time you sometimes you meet like a doctor, an emergency room doctor, especially, and they just don't find any of this stuff gross. And they yeah, are right. the, they we, those are the people that we need. I understand. I can understand how you can get to that point or be at that point where it's like, hey, you know what? Some people might find, you know, everybody can find something scary or gross. It's like, oh, look at this, like b- black. Like furry material coming through my epidermis on my forearm. Oh my gosh, that is just horrible. Mm, not that gross. To somebody, it might be, but it is an exposure thing. I think a lot of medical students, the first time they see a cadaver, the first time they they slice open a, a human human body, the first time they're in surgery for real, I think you get you get a tolerance. I mean, not oh everybody just starts. How, what? How, I freaking deleted my entire list. Well. Is that oh a fear God. of yours? What the hell? How did you do that? I just deleted my freaking DJ name list with all of my scary sh- What? Shake it and then hit undo. Shake it? Yeah, and then hit undo. What do you mean hit undo? Yeah. Undo. Hold on, there was a, I saw a capital P. Yeah, now shake it again. Then undo again. No, now it says redo. Redo. There's a P. Oh man. What was P for? Oh, did you do did you highlight everything while talking and then I was, type over it? I think when I sneezed, I deleted my DJ name. Well, list. maybe they're not important. I well, think, I can remember one. DJ Dope Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one I remember. I mean Oh my god. Uh, all right. DJ Dope oh, Nuts in the house. I don't, I don't, I don't need, maybe it's fate. Uh, Maybe I have to call myself DJ Donuts yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, well, we also have TBD, TBDJ. TBD. TBDJ. Now, this is a notes, huh? Is it in your notes app? It's a notes app and it's in airplane mode right now. Oh, oh, great, great, great. Oh, yeah. Go to, okay, okay, go, okay. Stop right now. Get Take your, it off airplane no, mode. No, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> no, this is exactly the kind of thing that you would do. Go get I'm your laptop. sweating, man. Go get your laptop right now. Copy the note into a new note. Copy the note into a new note. Well, call know. it something different. I'm not going to do it right and now. And then it'll be okay. Yeah. It'll be okay. Oh, you're saying so? I'll have the rest. I guarantee. Because I need to know what I'm afraid I'm of. I'm 100 percent sure that as soon as this podcast is over, because you're a creature of habit, you're going to ter- take your phone out of airplane mode, and you will forget. I guarantee you, there's a 100 percent chance you're going to screw this up if you don't listen to me right now. Maybe I should just call myself DJ P. <laughs> That's the only thing on this freaking note now. I, you need to go get your laptop. Cause you also need it cause you got your list of fears. You don't remember all of them. Can you go on without me? No, oh, I think I can handle it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, screw you. <laughs> screw you, man. Uh, well, you're let the me, one let's, who try, asked the, let's try that again. You're, you're, <laughs> I'm gonna get your can you go on oh, without me? Hey, here we go. I'm gonna get your laptop. Jenna's gonna get it. Can you go on without me? I doubt it, man. I, do, I doubt it, I really doubt it. I really, I, yeah. How, what's your level of certainty that you doubt it? Uh, I. You know, I'm very unsure. I'm, you know, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of going on without you. That's one of my top fears. <laughs> Man, okay. Let's see if this works, guys. This is this is happening. This is happening. This is this is I. This is my fear, man. You you know you work so hard on something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you're like and you work you, on a document. You, you work on a document and then it doesn't save. Yeah. And if you're like using Google Docs or something. It's, it's constantly saving. That's the best thing about using the cloud. And look, I'm proving it right now. Well, the thing about notes, unlike Google Docs, if you did this on Google Docs, you could just bring up a previous version. 
But Notes doesn't have that, so you get, I don't know if you and should I was put using important Evernote. things in Notes. And then Evernote was trying to sell me on all this other crap. And Evernote I'm not, has previous versions. I'm not paying Evernote for something that. Evernote's constantly creating multiple notes of my notes. See, because this is. That's stick, my thing about. Oh, stickies aren't notes. I've never opened notes on my computer. Oh, hold on. You've never opened notes on your computer? Oh, this might be trouble. You only use stickies? Welcome to notes. You don't use notes? Notes are way different than stickies. I, I, I use it on my phone. So now it's gonna go and try to sync? It's syncing right now, guys. Yeah, but what's it syncing with? <laughs> You've never opened notes, so it's not on here, bro. Mm. So yeah. go, to I, go to all cloud? All iCloud. I don't think I'm logged in as my, is this the be best podcast ever? <laughs> this is dramatic. Stick with me. This is a fear for some people. If you believe that we can get through this. Right, just, yeah, so do it, so what do you need to do? I need to figure out how I'm logged in. Well, hold on. To the notes what app. What folder are you, is this, are you on just on my phone? Here we go. I'm in my iCloud account and I'm looking at, I uh, know it's, okay. it's not there. So that's the iCloud account that's on there. So that's not the, your primary iCloud account. You need to go to your your MAC address iCloud account and it'll have them. So this one's the Gmail. And so. if it doesn't, you really are screwed. Right, You're gonna so have to just start the, from scratch, man. Gmail. So DJ not, Scratch, that could work. I'm sure that's been taken. All right, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna sign in with my other account. Man, this is the most uh, adventure we've had on this podcast in <laughs> quite some time. Someone's yelling at their their computer right now of what we should do. I'm sure. <laughs> well, if it wasn't synced to begin with, it could be difficult at this point. Yeah, but his phone should have been syncing with it because it says iCloud and it's oh. got and he's got multiple notes in there. So yeah, I just don't know why his, com I think his, his, uh, the computer for some reason is not. Here we go. I'm in my other iCloud account. All right, all right here we go. This is gonna I'm be clicking it. on notes. Yes! DJ Names! <laughs> DJ Dunk Nuts is back, baby! Uh, okay, now create, DJ TBD! Create a new note. Don't, and don't read these. I'm not reading it. Don't read my DJ names. Create a new note and just copy yeah. it over. I don't smell great anymore. That, that, Stress wet is right. Woo! Yeah, it smells <laughs> mm, more the right pit than the left. Now pit. again, and before you start turns out, I'm pretty scared okay, of it. Okay, listen. Before you start referencing this, create a new note and copy it over. You have to do that first. Or the copy? same thing. No, no. Create a new note first. Well, I'm gonna uh, let's not panic. Okay, I'm not. I'm just trying Paste. to paste. DJ names two is what I suggest. <laughs> And I would do T-O-O, because -O, it's cool. DJ names T-O-O. -O. Yeah. Yes. There we go. <sighs> Crisis averted. Oh my gosh, guys. Thank you for hanging with me. I wanna let you know that I just lost six months off my life. But And, and now I'm reading the list of DJ names and uh, like, I don't think any of them were worth the trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let's hear your next. Your are we uh, like I just don't are we think on next fear. Or are we, I, have you finished I, I, on I just don't fear? think DJ what? Cheese Profit is gonna. It was worth all this trouble. When did this list happen? <laughs> last night. Yeah, last night. You know, it's just kind of like. Um, I don't know that. Hey, what do you think? I mean, you know, I don't want to know. Uh, I don't want to know. I think Profit Cheese. With no DJ could be cool. Yeah, I don't. I I'm working within the realm of not using the term, term DJ, DJ at you're, all. What the, you're, yeah, it's 2022, man. Yes, yeah. I just want to have a moniker. Yeah, because he stands for disc jockey. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Well, now that this is here, I'm just going to use this. All right, y'all, we're back in this. I'm afraid of blood. I'm afraid of injuries. Let's move on to your next one on the list. Okay. Whew. Uh. You can shake your phone, and yeah. then that's the way to undo. How long has that been a feature? A while. Oh, okay, man. A while. Uh, How long has disc jockeys have existed? I am afraid of medium-sized groups. Mm. 
Okay, are you talking about as a person? Is this like, you're, I don't think you're talking as like uh, social anxiety. I think you're talking about like, are you talking about in like as a, in a performance? I think it's social anxiety. Oh, okay, because I definitely know if you're performing, if, if you're like addressing a group, a small group or a really large group, it's easy, but when you're addressing a, an awkwardly medium-sized group from like a stage, then that's nightmarish. Uh, and I don't, I, I, stages are, are very comforting to me, so. Uh, Separation. The, you know, get, I'm nervous before a stage performance. The, the nervousness melts away completely as soon as I'm on the stage and in front of the crowd. Like that's when the that's when all of the anxiety goes away. I'm like, now I'm here. I'm doing what I what I'm supposed to do. And of so, course, when it's like go like I'm going out to dinner with there's six people or eight or eight people in this group of friends and we're all having dinner together. Like I'm very comfortable there. But if it's just like, okay, 16 people and now it's like okay, we're gonna go around the group. Oh, we, we're gonna go around the group, and we would like everybody to talk about the last time they really felt insecure or any. I mean, any kind of question where it's like, okay, now what I've got parties. Gotta, are you going to? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's never actually happened. <laughs> I'm just imagining, and then you have to. It's just this weird in between social. See, a lot of our states. fears are things that never happen. Uh, no, but this has happened. I mean, I, there was a moment there um, yeah. where we were pre-pandemic where the the people that, and this is kind of an LA thing. Intentional friendship in, communities. Yes, and like you might find, I, like I went to a Thanksgiving thing. Oh, I, I don't wanna hear about that again. I've heard about it too and, many times. And But no, but there was a let's go around yeah. the, the horn yeah. and say it's, something. Yeah. And it's not like it. What it is at Mama Die and Daddy Max House when you go around the horn and say what you're thankful for. That's. I mean, I'm not. This is like you don't know. Every, yeah, like I don't know so, you. Man. So you're saying it's at least sixteen people, and it's it's it has to be comprised of strangers to you know what at least fifty percent strangers. Um, I think that that's part of it, and I think that. Let me and, and let, even if you're not doing a circle share, let's just say. <laughs> it, circle I mean, share. are you afraid if it's a if it's just a, a mingle party? Okay, I've never thought about this. I'm thinking about it out loud, so help me process this. I think that this is the problem for me. I have essentially two modes, right? I'm like a robot with two modes. This model has two modes. Okay. And one mode is I'm amongst friends and I am, it's a small group. I, and then the other mode is I am in front of a crowd and I am performing. And I think most of my friends would be like, those are two very different people. I'm not like, I don't, if I'm hanging out in a small group, I don't draw a lot of attention to myself. I don't like start making jokes and like do funny things. I just, it's never been my personality to do that. Now, occasionally if I'm like, somebody asked me to tell a story or I've got something I really wanna tell y'all, I'll kind of go into like a little bit of the performance mode, but I'm very rarely in performance mode or like, oh, I. I'm gonna throw, my dad, on the other hand, is like, if he's in a small group, he's like throwing out one-liners, making jokes all the time. I make jokes and do one-liners when me and you are doing comedy together, on this podcast, on Good Mythical Morning, in front of a big group. Yeah. And that is very much me, and it is, but then there's this middle ground where I'm like, not perform, it feels like this group is large enough for me to go into performance mode but I don't feel comfortable going into performance mode, so I'm staying in this sort of more intimate, I'm in an intimate conversation mode, but now I have to speak in a way that addresses more than 12 people, and it puts the it puts me, in, the robot inside me that is two modes is like, which mode do we assume, and I don't know what to do, and I think it just makes me uncomfortable. I don't have a medium-sized group mode that I have like fallen into. I'm either performing, and you're supposed to look at me and you're supposed to, to listen to the things I'm saying or I'm just kind of hanging out and I'm sort of like, just just a person that's just talking to other people. In the middle is is, mm. is, is is where things break down for me. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if, if I can relate to any of this specifically. I don't, and I, I, just, I don't know, I don't know if I do. I definitely, like, 
I do have a sense of social anxiety, but it's always this like, for me, it's the expectation. It's not being in the in the mix. It's it's leading up to it, and it has to do with things like, am I late? Have I for, <laughs> have I forgotten what day this is? Am I late? Have am I, I synced my notes? Am I way too early? You know that type of thing. Is DJ Dope not a good name or a bad name? Yeah, I mean sometimes you got to say it a uh, you got to say it really a hundred times. Yeah, every name, cheese profit, cheese profit. Yeah. Uh, so is it profit as in like making money off of cheese, or a profit making proclamations about cheese? Because I hope it's the proclamations. Making proclamations. Okay. Yeah. The I, you know what I if there's twelve people. There, okay, if you go to dinner, for dinner, some reason it never happens at dinner because what happens at a dinner table is- You have a zone. You talk to the people in your zone, unless it's a private room and we're all going around and talk. It, that, then it can become, then those dinners, that's why that happened at it's, that Thanksgiving It seems thing. like you don't really like the going around the table thing. Going no, around no, the no, circle. No, I'm using that because it, what it does is it highlights the specific dynamic I'm, a, I'm uncomfortable with. All the attention, from a group of 12 to 18 people, or let's go 12 to 30. Well, I wouldn't say 30 because the unique classroom size and I always loved being a class clown. I didn't have social anxiety. It's like 12 to 20, okay? 12 to 20 people and if you're speaking, everyone is looking at you and looking to you and then I'm, that's right. when I don't know if I, should I go into performance mode? You know, should I let these people know what I'm capable of? <laughs> you know, <laughs> or, or or should I just, be yeah. a normal guy who's just being honest, and I, and I, I and I struggle I between to 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 like what groove do you fall in? Because the I relate guy who's to just, that. The guy I who's just that. being honest and isn't trying to be funny or perform or impress you in any way. Yeah, but maybe a little funny. He's not trying to entertain you, but the one the, the me that's trying to entertain you. I'm super comfortable there. I actually don't feel like one is less me and one is uh, one is I, more me. I, I get that. It's just a mode for a setting. Next one on my list. Um, oh, you ready to move on, DJ Prophet? Well, we got, <laughs> I get, we, we got so many. Like, no, no, it's fine. It was just a funny way to move on. I mean, I was done. Go ahead. Can I give my? <laughs> were you done? Where's that? I mean, that was, was seemed done. like it was an. Exhausted. I was done. It was just a little bit of a heart. As a guy who's an aspiring DJ, I was saying it was a little bit of a jarring transition. <laughs> Your thing is supposed to be like let's it's usher smooth. usher us into the smooth, next thing. Smooth, so it's, it's just something to work on. Uh, thank you. Once um, you get your DJ name, I'm sure it'll all work itself out. <laughs> I am. Whatever it is, I can guarantee you, you're, no one's going to be happy with it at first. Yeah, that's that's a good name, right? That's a good name. I because I think I've already picked it out. Okay, from the list. All right. But I wanted to keep the list so I could always say these are the ones that I almost went with. So I'm glad I got it. Are back. you going to focus group this amongst like me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're or, not. Or is it going to be just like I, I, I don't. I'm debating that. Okay. I don't know. I, okay. I really don't know yet. Okay. All it's right. just too early to tell. All right. It doesn't. I, I don't have to be in the focus group. I'm just saying. I. I, I don't. I could know be yet. A, a focus group. All right, I, I'll, I'll be honest. Dope Nuts was uh, Christie's idea, <laughs> which you know kind of puts it in a new light, right? Oh wow! Okay, I know, right? right? I like kind it. of, you know, like kind of a compliment. Um, I'm afraid of cutting my dog's toenails. Oh, yeah, well, you can't catch me doing that. Uh, I had a fear of getting my own toenails cut as a child, and um, you know. Uh, my stepdad had to hold me down by the ankles so that my mom could trim my toenails. And it was just, it, it made it a lot worse. Did he sit on you? No, he was just- Was he sitting on you and then no, holding his, your ankles out in front of him? He just kind of grabbed my ankles. Okay. I mean, that made it traumatic, but I, I mean, what else were they gonna do? Put me under? You know, take me to a groomer? How old you know, are we talking? I, I'm not being, uh, this, uh, yeah, I don't know, early memory. I don't I mean, know. still maybe, I, I, I still might have been six. I don't, I don't know. I'm not faulting them at all. I think that's like at a certain point you gotta you gotta cut the toenails. I mean, I think you could send them out and have them run around and they naturally wear themselves down. Yeah, like on the concrete. At least with dogs. I try to I try to take Jess for a walk. He's got this children. freaking nail that's like I I would I guess it's the thumb. The thumbnail. It, it's way up here. It like it's not. It's way far away from the rest of the paws, and that toenail will 
curl up in a complete circle if you don't cut it. Yeah, it's back from when, when dogs had opposable and it's, thumbs. And it's very loose. It feels like I could grab Wolves. that toe, that like little vestigial toe and the nail and just like pull the whole thing off. And oh, there's a little bit of a bone but, in it. But, but don't. There's don't. a little bit of a bone in it and it just feels like it's not attached. What and is it, it from gross, though, for it real? It grosses me out. Like what What was it, what did it do at some point? I think I'm afraid that you cut them too close and I think, I was just afraid of, and I was probably really wiggly and I did get some blood drawn. Oh, I was saying, what is the oppose, what is that? Oh, thumb? I thought What's you were the talking point about of it? Like, it's obviously it's there for a what reason. It? It's, no, it used to be a thumb. It's what I'm it's saying. Nothing it's nothing now. It's vestigial. It's yeah. there for, it was there for a reason. Yeah, so it, dogs had thumbs? Or the ancestors of dogs had thumbs that they did stuff with, yeah, open cans yeah, they, and stuff? They have a fifth, they have a fifth metatarsal. Well, why did it move up? Because they didn't need it. It's it was just like, like, we can run faster I mean, without this And thing. then it goes away. Like, uh, um, Jasper has them on all four legs, but Jade only has them on the front two legs. And future dogs won't have them at all. Jade doesn't have them on her back legs at all. Isn't that wild? Yeah, and then, what you know, by the time that our dogs evolve, they'll be hooves. It'll dogs just be aren't one really thing. evolving because we're doing it artificially. No, I was just saying hypothetically. Yeah. So, um, and then whenever I snap the the thing to cut their nails, Jasper yelps even though it doesn't hurt. It's just the idea. Because it, he's just like me, and I feel for him. But I don't like sending my dogs to the groomer because they smell a lot better when I wash them myself, and it's like a special thing we have. So I don't want to send the dog to the groomer just to get their nails trimmed. Sean, we would take him to the to the groomer to get his uh, toenails cut, and he along with being groomed, right? And he bit the freaking he bit the groomer, so he's not allowed to go to the groomer. Yeah, so now you're in my boat, man. Don't bring him to me because that's what I'm afraid. Of. I think I'm the I'm one, afraid I'm of let cutting him run. toenails. I'm not afraid of cutting my own toenails. For the record, oh, you got over that. I got over that. Yeah, when you're in control of it, it's. It's way easier. I'd much rather cut my own toenails than I got a uh, a pedicure one time because, Ooh, because Jesse, yeah. Jesse was I, like, "You triggered me, try man. it. And I was like, it, "Yes, that brought it all back." You, I went like, to what part of this do you enjoy? This is torture. It's ticklish. I'm laughing the whole time. I didn't laugh at all. I mean, my toenails. I cried inside. Takes, you got to get like they bring out special extra tools to get through my toenails. You know, like oh, we were not prepared for this. <laughs> bring out the wall system. You know, wall with an H. I, I, I saw a, um, I think it was a TikTok of this like feisty chihuahua put in a sling, like picture like a hammock type sling, and there's four holes where the where the the legs go through. And he's just like growling he, the whole time. And he's like growling and like trying to get but to him, and they're do just nothing. Yeah, and then they're just cutting the toenails, and it's like it's good for everybody. They should put you in one of those at the pedicure place. It's like you and feet are coming out of it. I'm growling all <laughs> the whole like time. It's like you're right there in the middle, barking at the lady. Uh, what are you afraid of? I'm afraid of snakes, and this has gotten. I realized recently that this God, is. I'm, I'm afraid of snakes too. I can't believe. I yeah, that's on my. I'll put it on my list. Is, obviously. Um, it's affected me deeply, and okay. But you hold the, I'm. No, let me. On the show, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. a lot more afraid of snakes than you are. This is a weird, complex fear, and let me, I, I, I'll elucidate. Number Cause you one, hold Craig. I'm not afraid of, I'm not afraid of a snake. I'm not afraid of, if, if, I, if I know a snake is there, I'm going up to a cage, somebody hands me a snake. I'm not, I, I'm a little bit scared the whole time that like, even when holding Craig, that like I've seen those videos where they just they just reach up and bite you, and their little teeth mark get get all over your face and stuff, and you bleed like crazy. Uh. I don't like the idea of that, and so I'm a little bit scared the whole time, but not too scared to touch them. And uh, I have had a recurring dream for many years. Haven't had it that recently, where I'm walking through some environment, usually tall grass, and there's snakes everywhere, and this ties into the way my fear has manifested itself in real life. Now, growing up in North Carolina, we spent a lot of time in the woods, next to the river, next to the creek. Okay. We would walk indiscriminately through the woods uh, yeah, without ever thinking about snakes. And you know what? We saw snakes. We'd be swimming in the river and we'd look over and there'd be, like I remember down in Keith Hills at the bottom of that last spillway, Ooh, there was yeah. a bed of, I think it was probably water snakes, and I don't think it was moccasins, but like I'm talking, 40 snakes slithering on top of each other like Indiana Total Jones. Total Indiana Jones. And we would like stick a like golf club in there. And, and like, they were 
They were long. big. They were big. And it could be they could have been six foot long. Easy. And I stepped on a water moccasin one time when moving the canoe and jumped away and he didn't bite me. But what I have found is that I cannot enjoy hiking in California. Really? I can't because of rattlesnakes. Yes. But then I went back to North Carolina um last year and was walking through the woods with Jesse and I realized I was constantly thinking about snakes. Really? And I was like, in this super focused, like looking around and, and being like, don't step on a snake, don't sneak up on a snake. And I'm like, why am I, why has this fear manifested itself? Now, hiking in California, when you go up in the mountains, over the summer, I went hiking four times in a row, I saw a rattlesnake. Four, like four hikes in a row, I saw a rattlesnake. But they are reclusive, and you gotta really get them cornered for them to do anything to you. There was one and that, that had its head like you. on the trail, and the rest of his body, which was weird, and like an ambush situation, but he kind of slithered away. I don't know why this has, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to me. I don't think about, I'm, I'm so afraid of snakes, and when I go hiking, I just do not think about that, because I wanna enjoy hiking. Well, I, I want to enjoy it too, but I'm I, thinking about snakes. I I I think my my level level of compartmentalization is like super human. Like I think that might be my superpower. Oh, what if you be called DJ compartmentalizer or just the compartmentalizer? Actually, that sounds like a show on ABC. <laughs> <laughs> that like stars a teenager, <laughs> you know, like a teenager doing an Sol adult job, solving solving. Um, he like what? talks directly to an angel. He has to be solving crimes though. Yeah. But he's like, he's doing it through his expertise in like storage equipment. Yeah, he just owns a storage facility. The compartmentalizer. I'm afraid of snakes too, man. I'm afraid of spiders, I'm afraid of bugs, I'm afraid of lizards, I'm afraid of any little thing that like creeps or crawls or has multiple legs. Fuck multiple legs. I had a lizard drop the tail on me. <laughs> he dropped the tail? You know how if they panic, they can just drop their tail so it'll start squiggling around and they run away from it? S just separate from their tail. They have an yeah, ability uh, like to a... snap their tail off. This My was, goodness. you know you know those, you know the- I didn't know they could snap it off. I thought it had to be pulled off. Well, I don't exactly know the mechanics, but I've always, here's what happened. I was in the garage and I just cleaned the garage. I was very proud of myself. And I was like, man, and I'm like spraying uh, like mint. You know, you can do like mint spray to get insects from keeping, so you oh. don't have to like do like pesticides. Oh, like ants and stuff? Yeah, and any kind of bugs. You know, I'm like, I'm sucking up, I'm like sucking up all kinds of, I'm just going around and sucking up uh, little spiders, and I, I know people don't like it when you kill spiders, but you know what, I kill spiders, I kill, if bugs get in the house, I kill them. Sorry, I'm that guy. And so, and I, you know You're what? You're a maverick. The, the best way to do it is with your shot vac. Just suck them right up. <laughs> yeah, surely they, they probably die slowly inside of the shot vac, but I also don't care. I bet there's a lot to eat in there. And so I think they make a little community of friends before they all die slowly. But I suck them up in the thing. Just reverse it and then blow it into your neighbor's yard. That's what a shop vac can do. I care about do, my man. neighbor more than I care about the community of insects that in, live inside my shop vac. Here's the thing. I, I was looking at my amazing immaculate garage and then all of a sudden I saw one of those lizards and it was a big daddy. Sometimes they get real big and he was doing the thing where as soon as he saw me, <laughs> <laughs> he played dead. Now, let me be clear. I don't kill lizards. It's are you, just are you fine with picking them up? Nope. I don't. <laughs> but I, yeah. now, as as a teen, me neither. as a teen I don't pick and up a younger, lizard. I killed lizards. I killed snakes. I mean, I killed squirrels and rabbits too. I would a BB gun. I was a little terror, and um, and we did eat them sometimes when we could convince my mom to cook like a <laughs> rabbit in the house, which we did one time. <laughs> she like braised a damn you bring rabbit. It a, you bring in a little, ta the ta did you bring the tail of the lizard to Jesse and ask her to cook it? Uh, no, I didn't. So this thing's staring at you and But then... I don't kill any animals other than insects now. I have evolved. Okay, it's plain dead. It's plain dead, but I like, I can't, I'm not gonna touch this thing, because mm -hmm. they bite, man. 
they bite and this they I'm scared of them. They look like a snake with legs. Yeah. And so I, I got I, the, I, I got the broom. He was not even responding to the broom. He was like, "I'm so committed to this." Oh, wow. But then it like the third stroke of the broom, he woke up, panicked and went right back into the like the little crevice area where the other broom was. Just leave him alone. And I was like, no, 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 because now when I'm coming down here in the morning to do my stretches, I know that you're hiding over there and you're gonna run out and bite me on the nose. <laughs> or he, something worse. He wouldn't have stayed there. And so I took the back end of the broom and started poking back there, trying to get him to move. And he is, like I see him and I'm not trying to poke him, I'm trying to scare him. Flush him out. To get him out of the garage. He does a maneuver and then all of a sudden, Bam, I'm looking in two different places because he's done his thing. The tail broke off right at the base. And this was a big sucker. His tail was three inches long. His tail breaks off and begins to do this acrobatic dance that is, it, oh you know what, it worked. Oh my God, this is I'm focused horrifying. On this. I'm focused on this. This evolutionary adaptation worked because I didn't see where he went. I was too focused on the trick. And, and it, it, that thing moved. When it detaches, it just keeps wriggling. For three to four minutes. Wow. Three to four minutes. And then I was afraid to touch it. I left it there for a day because I didn't have a Kleenex. That is so disturbing. And you know what? I know that, like, what other animals, I mean, I'm, I'm afraid of all those little things. What else? I know that you're afraid of bees. I'm not afraid of bees. I'm not afraid, I don't know what it is. I'm not afraid, I just believe I am not gonna get stung by a, like a yellow jacket, a bee, especially a bee. I am not afraid of bees. It, like, what about a wasp? Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not are, gonna sit there and eat lunch with a wasp. They're demonic. I'm not gonna mess with a wasp. But like a bee or a yellow jacket even, like those little yellow jackets that come around your food, but they don't sting you, man. You can't handle it. Hold on, the little you ones, cannot, that's, that's different. You can't a, a real it. yellow jacket will sting you, and I've been stung I'm, I'm multiple I'm talking about times. the little things, the not, little ones that I'm aren't not, actually yellow jackets, I'm not scared but they're of yellow. I'm not scared of Yes, this. you are, and you're afraid of bees. I am afraid of bees. Yeah, I'm not afraid of a uh, bee. Now, but a I'm- A bee can land on me and I'll keep eating. Not to the point- Because you, 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 don't, you don't put that energy into out there, and then the bee won't sting you. That's not my experience, man. And then honestly, if they do sting How many times you, you been stung by bees? Not that many, no, not that many. I, I've been stung by several bees. That's because you're being erratic. No, you think they're interpreting? No, no. Yes! I'm saying that like there's multiple times You're where threatening them. A bee, I'm, the, I'm a bee friend. A bee landed on me. I love bees. And stung me. Because no, they don't have no multiple threat. legs. Uh, I they wish have, I, they I, have cute stripes. I wish I wasn't scared of bees. Because I really have, believe in them. They have arms. They have arms, y'all. And you're also afraid of bats, is that on your list? You're uh, deathly afraid of bats, dude. You didn't put it on your list? Well, okay. Wait, All it's right, not, we've, it's so not we, a comprehensive list. We've gone through the animals, I think. Yeah, yeah, snakes, bats, bees, spiders, lizards. Mul multiple legs. Um, I asked Lando before I dropped him off this morning, what is he afraid of? And he said, oh, and this was a big one for him, he's afraid of mascots. And I was like, "That's a common fear." It's a common. I'm like, "Why are you afraid of mascots?" He's like, "Cause I, there's a, I, cause I know there's a person in there," and I'm like, "But they don't talk." And he's like, "Yes," and and he said, "And their facial expression never changes." It's like, it's a silent. It's so creepy. Like mascots are freaking creepy. I was like, "Oh, you know what? I should be afraid of mascots." Well, I'm gonna start being afraid of mascots I think, too. That's, that's a that's a good cogent Again, argument. This sir. is what it's like to have Link as a dad. You come to him with a fear and he just adopts it as, <laughs> as opposed to helping you with it. I'm I am now afraid of mascots, man. Uh I I find mascots creepy. I I think that if you don't find mascots a little bit creepy, then there's probably something wrong with you. Or you're a you're a Disney adult. But I think that you do mo most kids when confronted with a mascot, will cry hysterically. And I think Lando's past that point. I mean, I, he's not I, gonna, I, I don't know. know if it's the majority. I mean, at Disney World? No, not the majority. I mean, when you're like, when you're really young? I'm saying like yeah. a mascot that you don't recognize. Lando is not really young, he's he's 12. No, no, I'm saying, but he, he's not gonna cry at a mascot. He's just like, I don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not interested. But he's not gonna cower from a mascot yeah, at this point. There's a little bit of cowering. Well, okay. maybe you gotta get a mascot costume and find out. Maybe so, I gotta put, like a good put him in one. 
That is the way that you overcome a fear is become the thing that you're most afraid of. <laughs> he's gonna be like the best college mascot ever. I'm Batman. And he's like, I used to be very afraid of this. You should be, you should be the next Batman. I love the, the beard won't work. Um, Bearded Batman, not gonna happen. Did you say what you're afraid of next? Uh, I'm afraid of tweeting, dude. I'm just freaking afraid of it. Well, this is, uh, there's a lot of evidence. To and it's this. like there's just these few times that I w I will tweet, and and I'm not talking about like a retweet or like some sort of promotion. I'm talking about like expressing myself in like in like using like thinking about things and writing it down. You know, I actually think I'm afraid of writing down thoughts. Like I hate doing that. Yeah, because they get lost sometimes. I hate writing things down. Uh, I hate email, but I'm afraid of tweeting because th the few times that I take a risk, it's just like it just leaves everybody scratching their head and <laughs> criticizing me. Yeah, that's the internet, and I don't man. blame them. That's the internet. You know what? Because I always learn that. You know what? You're right. It's just, I I'm afraid of of actually having a thoughtful discourse with the open internet. Oh. Is that what you're intending to do sometimes? Because <laughs> because that because that feels different than the way than the way you tweet. It doesn't feel like this is the beginning of a thoughtful discourse. It doesn't. Some of the things you tweet yeah. don't feel like an invitation to discourse. It's just like Nothing. I don't know what not not discourse. I don't know what series of events led to Link tweeting that. And it's so tough. I mean, it's so tough to know how to uh, like. There's so many things that like my. I mean, you think about all the issues in the world, and they you know. Every, the people who care about the things that they care about, if they like you, they want you to also care about it, especially when it's something that's like, if it's like uh, an an issue that people need to champion because there needs to be change. And it's like extremely intimidating to me. Mm. So it's like, uh, yeah, to take like the serious route here, it's like, I'm I'm really afraid. I don't know, it's just like, it just, it just, it racks my nads, man to like care deeply about things, but to not know how to like do it on Twitter. I, I it's just like, there's something, and it's, I, some of it is the perfectionism thing and like not wanting, you wanna be able to anticipate criticism so you can take care of it yourself and not let other people do it. Like as a perfectionist, you know, there is this fear of um, criticism, you know? Uh, so I think that's part of it. But then just like, even tweeting goofy shit, you know, is like, I, I feel pretty paralyzed on that front. And I think I'm okay with it. You know, I think I'm just, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm less of because I don't, except the times when I do and then I realize that I shouldn't. Yeah, I... Maybe I should just delete Twitter. I like it, I, 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 like, I like lurking. You probably shouldn't delete. It. You, I'm should not gonna. you should probably not follow four thousand people. You should probably undo that at some point, um, because you got a lot of. I mean, I had to go through one time many years ago because we. Are Jenna just, helped me with that. Oh, how many do you follow now? Oh yeah, I I help help you unfollow things. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many people I'm following. Oh, now. so you reduce the amount? I reduce because we amount. used to like follow everybody who followed us. Yeah, and then some of okay. them were taken over by really weird accounts. Oh, yeah, there was you uh. were following some really weird things. Yeah, I think that the yeah. um, I completely understand the fear, and a, they're definitely you're definitely not missing out on anything by not tweeting, and your life is probably simpler because of it. I but because it's um. It's it's like a part of our it's in, it's expected to be part of our occupation, and that's what makes it kind of squirrely, especially when it gets to like, why aren't you saying something about this? And if you don't, that automatically means you don't care about it. That's not true. And because I do tweet, not I mean I go through phases where I'll tweet a lot about stuff, and then I go through long periods of time when I don't tweet. I'm currently in a relatively active Twitter phase. And you do get this thing where, oh, okay, I said a couple of things about this and so now I need to say a couple of things about this. And then of course there's a another conversation that happens on the mythical level, on the corporate level, right? Because we're a brand and we right. it is part of brand responsibility and just part of our personal yeah 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 uh, which we, we, and we're we're very connected to that especially when it's things that like the stuff that I'm talking about I'm actually really grateful that we have 
this, we have the mythical account where it's like we are involved in saying, yes, we do want to say something. And, well, and to be clear. And there's a way to say it that like it's not, all the pressure's not on me to figure we, it we out. We have a great social. But I, agree, but I agree with it. We have a great social media team, but the vast majority of things that are said when it comes to sensitive topics uh, or issues that are not just, hey, go watch this thing or here's a joke. We are very, very involved yeah. in, in crafting in, in crafting those messages, so. And I like that system. And sometimes. And it's not, hey, you do this for me. And no, especially if we've taken the time to craft a message uh, for the main account and then I'll just retweet it. Right. Again, because it's just like, hey, this is me saying something about this because this is me and you right. saying something about this. But but mostly, you're, you're so right because just getting something a little bit wrong or even saying something wrong unintentionally, like, oh, I actually misinterpreted this or what I said could be so easily misunderstood. That's the internet. Everything I say in life can be easily misunderstood. That, yeah, and I do, yeah. I, it, At, by me as I'm saying it. Right. You Maybe you just shouldn't tweet. It's fine. I'll, I'll tweet and then Mythical will tweet. It's fine. You know, we don't all have to tweet. Yeah, I know that. I know that. So, this is a healthy fear, probably. Well, now I have to prove you wrong. Uh, I have a fear of getting sick. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Or just something going, get you know, or being injured in some weird way. I'm a hypochondriac. Um, you've and ne you've never had a big sickness. I've never had a big sickness. You've had some I've, you've I, had some big injuries. I've had whoops. Um I've had a weird collection of annoying maladies. So like the number of weird things about my body that are just inconveniences. You know, okay, yes, I've got psoriasis. I have a bad back. Um I, I don't have a chin. That's not really one of them. Uh, there are multiple things I can't, I'm not thinking of right now. But just, I'm, in fact, I remember going through like, starting at my head and going all the way through my body and thinking about the weird things that had happened. Right, like your elbows are like weird shaped. That's, yeah, but also I have arthritis in them and that's one of the reasons that they're shaped like that because they're inflamed on a regular basis. They're not inflamed right now, but they were inflamed in the past and so they like swole and they just stay that way. And so, and I've got this weird shoulder thing or whatever. It's like, yeah, I can You lost go. sight in one eye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've had weird Due to things stress. happen, but nothing that is uh, life-threatening and nothing, the back at times becomes life-altering. And I think it is the times that m my back has been serious enough to be life-altering that I'm like, Oh man, I mean, I'll get into a car and begin settling in to drive. And I, this happened the other day when we got into a car and I, uh, when we went camping, when we went camping with Stevie and the I was driving my FJ Cruiser and as you know, there's not a lot of room in the back seat of the FJ. They kind of forgot what people were shaped like. And so I had to move the front seat up to a place where my knee is right against the dash. <laughs> and I said to and I said to you right when you got in, yeah. If we are in a wreck, my femur will snap immediately because it's like exactly the width of this thing, right? Or what well, well, and we know a guy growing up that was in a wreck and his femur went through his hip. Uh, out the stop back it. Of, stop out, it. Out the back of his butt. <laughs> uh and he's ended up having as you can imagine serious problems for the for the rest of his life. Um, I think about these things to too large of a degree because I flirted with chronic pain and chronic inconvenience, yeah. and then I just think about, oh man, I'm so fortunate that I haven't had to deal with physical things that cause, make you have to change your life. You have to do things in a different yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just have this- Body trauma, man. Fear of, getting sick, getting an injury, and if I start, if you know, if I find a mole that looks weird, 
and then I'm like, I gotta make an appointment. I gotta make an appointment to the dermatologist. And then I'll be thinking about it kind of nonstop, like obsessing, uh, obsessing about it until I can go and talk to a professional and they can tell me that it's okay. And that has gotten better. I haven't really talked much about my hypochondria in my therapy, but just the process of therapy has made me better at dealing with it, I guess. But yeah, that's a constant, that's a constant fear. And I get it, man. If I were you, I'd be scared too. But you don't worry about this at all. You don't have no. any health. No, I just have I have uh, this fears. I have this uh belief that I don't know. I just don't I, I don't believe that something's gonna go wrong in like a, a moment to moment way. I have a belief that like when when I get cancer or when I, when something really bad does happen, I'll be like, okay, yeah, I, I knew it was gonna happen. I wasn't gonna waste, but I'm I and I didn't make a decision to not waste my energy not worrying about it. I've, I'm anxious about plenty. <laughs> you it's know? just not one of the it's things. It's just not my know. thing. You know, so it's like I'm glad that's not on my list. You know, but it totally makes sense. Why? With like you know, you have the you have a debilitating back injury at a young age, and then it's like, okay. But I also think it's just what what else is gonna I, I just what else is gonna happen? Hypochondria is ge genetic. My my. Yeah, my mom's the same way. And the way the way that you process st stuff, like knowledge, like it's like, I, I feel like I'm able to like be told something and then if I, again, the compartmentalization, I don't, if I don't want that to trickle down into like, what are the ramifications of that, of that potentiality for me? Like I, I, I try not to, Ruminate. I was well, not that I. I find myself not ruminating on that type of thing. Yeah, it's just how my brain doesn't work. So I'm good with it. I'm good with it. I uh, uh, I have a couple more. I'm not going to mention one because I'm cutting it. Okay. All right. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna just go to. I'm gonna give a quick shout out to being uh, really afraid of forgetting something really important when I'm packing. Mm. You know, you're on your way to the to the cruise ship. Well, I've never been on a cruise. Or the, you know, you gotta drive an hour and a half to the freaking airport. It's like, man, do I have, I boiled it down to like, you know what? I get in the car and I start driving and I ask everybody in the car, including myself, it's like, do you have your ID and do you have your phone? If you got those two things in modern and, civilization, you'll and, be okay. Yep. And do you have? And maybe do you have the charger for the phone, so that you don't, you know, you're, if you're yep. not at a place where you can buy one, yep. you got the phone, the charger, the wallet, and like, um, you know, an enema. An enema. That's important. you know, if you if you're traveling, and if you just really get, you know, that can really put a put a put a stop to the enjoyment of your vacation, if you know what I mean, uh -huh. or your trip. So. I'll leave you with that one. Um, that feeling, man. I've forgotten something. I know it. Yeah. Um, generally, it's commonly called the fear of missing out. Uh, uh I will say that I'm, I have a I'm difficult surprised. time. Um, I wouldn't say that this is debilitating because I'm able to enjoy myself in many different circumstances, but I am always, without exception, thinking, if I'm doing something fun, I'm thinking, yeah, but I could, what, there's something else that could be more fun. <laughs> that sucks, man. You know, um, <laughs> and like, did I make the choice, is this thing that I'm doing right now the right choice? When I, and I, this manifested itself on the road trips that I took with Locke this past year, which I planned uh, and chose the destinations and the attractions that we would stop at. And if we were at one place, I'm evaluating the experience in the moment and thinking to myself, okay, this is pretty fun. I'm having a good time, but mm, we could have gone to the other thing that I considered going to. And I wonder if that's more fun. And I think that this is kind of what drives me almost at like a, you know, a core, fundamental level, 
is always just thinking, maybe this other thing, maybe this other thing will be the thing that is truly, is truly fun. Again, I can have a great time and enjoy myself in the moment and I'm getting better at being like, you know, on the road trip it was, hey, the main thing here is that you and Locke are getting to spend all this time together and you could be stopping at the world's largest ball of yarn, which incidentally we didn't stop at. There's or, or you could be I, going to McDonald's yeah. and you can enjoy each other's company and that's yeah. the more important. I thing. definitely relate to like the, if, if, if I'm the one who came up with the itinerary or made decisions about something that then there's like choices, it's like what am I missing out on that's like it's on me. But I don't find myself thinking, what did, what, 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 what did they do? What did, what did so and so do this weekend? I thought like, I gotta go, even though I don't, you know. Well, and Shepard and I had this conversation recently uh, when I was I was taking him to um, uh, an appointment, and we had a little time, and we went in to get some coffees from this place, and they had a macadamia nut latte, mm-hmm. okay, and macadamia nut milk latte. And I remember we had macadamia nut milk on the show, and we had liked it. I thought. And he got like a regular coffee or something. And then we're walking and he's like, yeah, that seems like the kind of thing that you would get. <laughs> and he was like, you always have to try something. You, you, he says, I like to just get the thing that I know that I'm gonna like. And I was like, yeah, it, that, is, that is my personality. Living in Los Angeles, you know, tonight is date night for me and Jesse. And we're gonna go to some restaurant that I've never been to. And we always like to go to a new place, even though it increases the risk of you not having a good dinner. Because if you go to a place that you like and you go back, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you're gonna have a good time. But right. there's just something about the unknown of maybe this will be better, maybe it will be different in some way, and that ends up winning out every single time. And I don't, it, it, it doesn't always, Lend itself to a good experience because if you but get you had to know, man, if you get what you want, you, yeah. you, 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 you it's like what Shepard said is like, I, I'm gonna, he's like, I, I'm gonna take the time to drink this thing, I'm gonna waste the time and the calories on it, I'm gonna, I want to enjoy it, you know. So, you a FOMO having mofo, yeah. So, I don't know, I do think you, there's a balance, do, do, but I'm always thinking about it. Don't be afraid, put your fears to rest. Hopefully, we've helped, at least in commiseration. Oh, they, those guys are afraid of that? And look, they have a podcast. Yeah, well, and they're next, no next week, me. we're gonna hear from you. And we're That's gonna, right. We're gonna get more specific, because we're gonna be talking about the S- supernatural, spooky. Disturbing experiences. Yeah, it might not be supernatural. It might be like the time a guy, you know, Try to get in, get in your house or something. I don't know. We want to we want we want to hear mm-hmm. the the scary stuff. Yeah, and because um, it's October, right? And because it's one eight 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 earpod one. Of course, by the time this comes out, we already have the ones for the next episode. But you can always call in and let us know what you think about what we're talking about now, so we can play it at the end of the episode. Follow us on Twitter, not to see me tweet, but to see the mythical account put prompts out that then you can call in. So yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Hashtag your biscuits. Give us a wreck, man, for the road. Oh yeah, uh, I'm enjoying a book right now. I won't say I'm reading it because I'm listening to it. Uh, Shoe Dog. It is the autobiographical story of the founder of Nike, Phil Knight, and it's just a fascinating classic. You know. American entrepreneur, I can't say that. Does it rhyme with manure? Yeah. Uh, story. And uh, the guy, he's a, he's a good writer. He's a, like a super well-educated, m- well-traveled guy that the way he frames his experiences is, is very fascinating. It's funny in places. It's inspiring in other places. It might end really horribly, but I don't think it does because Nike seems to be pretty, pretty big. Ha! Uh, I haven't I haven't gotten to the end of the story, but I think it works out for him pretty well. I shoe dog, shoe dog. I just turned my phone back on, dude, and I I synced my notes, and I have a note called P with nothing in it, and I have a note called DJ names. 
and it's got all of this in here. And then I don't have a note called DJ Names 2. <laughs> so all that was for nothing. What? I don't know, I don't know, I got it right here, man. I don't even know what to say. Next week, y'all. Hey, Red and Leak. This is Micah from North Alabama. I wanted to tell you what scares me the most, and it's, it's a little, I feel like it's a little irrational. When I was a kid, I used to be fascinated with the book, with books about uh, the Titanic sinking. And I had posters and books. Also, I was fascinated with uh, the Loch Ness Monster. I realized that it was deep bodies of water with large things in them. That's what actually really scares me to death is this kind of great unknown in the deep uh, water. That, that really scares me. I mean, I've got goosebumps right now. Hey guys, my name is Lily. I'm from Oklahoma. Okay, I have two things. One is pretty normal. Dolls freak me out. I don't know why. I've never had any creepy experience. They're just so freaky. And the second thing that's a little weird is like crabs and lobsters. I've had multiple nightmares where a huge crab like crawls under my blanket and I wake up and I start like kicking and it's so scary. I don't know. They're just so freaky. Okay, cool. Love you guys. Bye. Hey, Rhett and Link. It's Ryan from Richmond, Virginia on my way home, but I just wanted to just finish and listen to your latest one. And uh, what scares me the most has got to be heights. I'm also afraid of like people intensely smiling and staring at you. Hi, my name is Alex Ramsey. I'm from West Virginia. And the thing that scares me the most is pregnancy. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.